Welcome, everybody. Ah, chilling in the fashion bunker. <laughs> This place is like huge. I don't know if you can hear the echo or not. Hi, everybody. All right, let's get to it. Ah, oh, I'm all over the place today. It's been a very difficult couple of hours. <laughs> let's just put it that way. But I'm here now. Um, all righty, so we're gonna do I'm losing all my bits and bobs, wait. And I also have to find out uh, where everybody is in terms of live stream because I don't see nothing typical. Okay, live streaming. Ah, then we have the chat. Do we have a chat? Um, yes, I do believe so. I'll be checking out the chat in just a second. I obviously, as is also typical for me, can't even find myself on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who am I? I'm the person who's going to do the unboxing of this little gidget here. But obviously, um, it's creepy internet. Doesn't want to do what I wanted to do. Okay, well, anyway, before I get to um, reading all your chats, a lot of you have been telling me, try out Coco Mademoiselle Intense, you know, go for Coco Mademoiselle Intense. It's amazing. We like it or it's OK, you know, and I've been postponing it just because, and as I mentioned this in a couple of um, comments or videos, well, some comments that I wrote to you guys, but also in a lot of videos, I said um, that I kind of at the moment am not ready for another, you know, mishap by Chanel in terms of, um, I just second my channel now, this is gonna start going all bananas on me. Um, in terms of disappointing me with another release, with another fragrance, you know what I mean? Okay, anyway, oh, there I am, now I see myself. But do I see a chat? Oh, I do see chat. Okay, we're good to go. Everybody says hi. Tony says yes. Emilia says <laughs> in Madonna voice, I'm waiting. Uh, Johnny says, OMG. Um, Odorteca says, my body is ready for this. <laughs> Sunrays 001 says, waiting. Ma uh, Marla Costa says, oh my God. Glitter Gypsy says, Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Ferna Barragan, uh, where are you, Deco? Glitter Gypsy asks me. I'm in the fashion bunker. Ferna says, I have to work in 10 minutes. No, but I love your content. Thank you so much. Johnny says, hi, beautiful. <laughs> Don't say that. That embarrasses me. Uh, Johnny says, thanks again for the birthday. Yes, happy belated birthday, Johnny, again. Um, Emilio says, hey. Ryan says, unboxing, nice. Gloria says, hi, I love. Marcin says, hi. <laughs> Malacosa says, pray for Coco Mademoiselle Intense, yes. Uh, Emilio says, heard many good things about it. Excited to hear your opinion. Gail says, hello, lovely. Hey, Gail, how you doing? Uh, Helen says, another flanker. Why couldn't Gabrielle have been spectacular? No. Helen, this is not a flanker. This is just another concentration of a flanker. <laughs> because Coco Mademoiselle is a flanker of Coco. But Coco Mademoiselle Intense is not a flanker of Coco Mademoiselle. It's just another concentration. Um, all right, guys. So this is what it is. And I'm going to pull, move everything. I'm being like so, OK. Ooh. All righty. 
by the way, this is the first time I'm doing a Chanel unboxing live. And also at the same time, live for the very first time ever, ever, um, first impressions. Mind you, I went to the boutique, right? And I, I didn't, like, I, the ladies, you know how they are. What can I do for you? And I was like, um, can I have Coco Mademoiselle Intense 100 milliliter, please? Thank you. And then she goes like, oh, okay, yes, sure. Uh, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. Um, would you like us to add your name into the system? I was like, You're already, I'm already in your system. I'm in your system, under your skin, in your blood. <laughs> You're in my system. I mean, Chanel, not the lady. And then, and then you know, classic stuff. They're wrapping it up, uh, and they're like, uh, is it a present? I'm like, no, it's for me. There's no gender and perfume. And then I begin with the whole shebang of educating people, which I shouldn't. I should just not care, I guess. But I do. You know me. I care. So I was like, no, it's for me. And she's like, oh, okay. I'm like, don't be surprised. It's a perfume. It's it's okay that a guy says it's for himself. Um, and then I was like, so when is, yes, another scoop. A lot of you don't know that yet, but a lot of you do know it. Blue de Chanel is coming out as a pure perfume or a parfum, which will be probably 50 to 75 milliliter, just like the Dior uh, parfums or, of uh, Fahrenheit and uh, Dior Homme. So I was like, so when's that coming out? And she's like, oh, uh, you know a lot. Who are you? And I was like, well, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> that was that was a bit too bitchy, but whatever. At that point, I was just, just give me the freaking perfume. Thank you very much. And then, um, oh, another scoop. I, I wrote that, I think, in a, on Instagram already. Follow me on Instagram, Super Deco, all spelled together. Because a lot of scoops come there first. I'm totally blinding myself by my own uh, spotlights right now. I don't see a thing. This is going to be really complicated for me. Um, and I said, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> spotlights, wait before the spotlights. Oh yeah, so they have that little pebbly thing and I mentioned that, or did I mention it? Or am I gonna mention it? Because I do have a couple of videos lined up already. You know the hand cream, the Chanel, this is a scoop for those of you who don't know it yet. The Chanel hand cream in the shape of a pebble, a rock. Well, it's coming out again, we're in the same shape with Chanel number no. five perfume. Like Chanel number no. five, hand cream hand cream perfumed with chanel number no. five how amazing is that so i was like put me down for that thank you and then she's like okay we will contact you as soon as it arrives i was like thank you very much and then i gave all my compliments and critiques about the les exclusives auto parfums again okay anyway so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna unbox this one because i know you don't like me to blabber on too much this is the thing it's 100 ml Uh, yeah, you see the little pearly pearlescence of the uh, of the um, of the bottle, and then we have the gold, the gold, gold, a lot of gold. And then I told her that the only eau de parfum I like from the Les Exclusives is Gardenia. She's like, "Oh, here's a little present for you. Do you have it already?" And I was like, "No." But of course I have it. I was like, because I wanted her to give it to me. I was like, "Oh no, I don't have it." Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> I'm so I was like, oh, can I, what is it? <laughs> and she, she opens it up and I was like, oh, isn't that cute? But of course I know what it is. And then, but this one I did not know of. She also gave me another little present before we get to the perfume. Now this thing is really kind of ugly, but it's adorable. Uh, it is the Coco Mademoiselle Chanel Eau de Parfum Intense. Mm. Wait, really? It's a spray? Okay, I didn't know this was a spray, but look. It's a free little sample. I mean, it's not a spray. They made a mistake. They wrote spray, but it's not. It's a splash bottle. And it has a little like Coco Forever party, you know, the party that uh, we saw the advertisement campaign happen in. So this is kind of like the little miniature bottle in Coco Forever party mode. The Coco Mademoiselle Intense. It is adorable. I mean, and these little things move. They're three dimensional. I mean, how cute is this little thing? Just saying. So there you go. This unboxing is revealing, um, and it's all gold on the other side. Look at the gold, 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 gold. Blinded by the gold. Um, so we have a little bit of a kind of revelations happening. Okay. I also have 
uh, because we will do a comparison, I have my old school pre-reformulated. See how little I use it? I never use it. Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum, um, 35 ml. I don't even know if they, I don't think they do these bottles anymore. Oh, the fingerprints galore. Um, I told you in some videos before in the past, you know, this one to me smells really good on clothes, not on my skin. So let's see if this one can beat it. And not like beat it in terms of, well, maybe even beat it, but also beat a Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum. Okay. So we've seen it all, almost. Um, let me open this one. I guess we'll... I guess we're going to be a top today, not a bottom. We're not opening the bottom. We're opening the top. But usually we're very versatile. And your dirty minds should not wander somewhere else than perfume. Pulling it out. Oh, my God. This is <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. Oh, I see. They have upped their game because now they package it just like they do uh, low. Number five. Okay. We like that. Sure. Emilia says, oh, okay. Yeah, you see, Emilia. Uh, yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm innocent. Um, oh, you see, this annoys me. I know that they like to do this stuff with like putting stickers on top because it's, it's a thing like it, it's, it, it makes it look more expensive and costly, but it's such a pain in the butt to travel with stickers on the bottles. You see, this one is, is printed. The Eau de Parfum is printed on it. And I, I would have hoped that this was too, but it's a sticker. So it makes it a very delicate bottle. And I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, but why did I buy 100 ml as opposed to 50 ml? Because like the price difference was a joke. Like literally you get like 50 ml, which is half of this bottle for around 100. And this is like around 140. So it was a no brainer for me, you know? Okay, I am excited. We're gonna do here intense, and the auto parfum we're gonna do there. So let's. I don't, have any, I don't want to spray anything here on the side. Um, oh, look at that misty sprayer! Yes. Oh, oh, I get it now. I know the difference. Uh huh. It's still super chemical. It's still aggressive in a way. It's still like. Love that Vivian piece. Oh, wait. Have you been watching from the beginning? Because I also have this little Vivian thing I'm a jiggy here. I, I'm wearing this Y because it kind of has the goad and then it has a little bit of the purple touch, which I know this is more like a rosy hue but it matches so well with this kind of color i think so that's why but it keeps falling off this little thing so let's just put it there for sake of color you see i'm such a perfectionist this is insane wait give me give me let's put this what am i making out of this thing like a pillowcase i just need a little touch of this color in the video you know what i mean There, <laughs> back. Uh huh. It's different. Okay, let's do this little critter, the Eau de Parfum Classic pre reformulated version. Also, super aggressive. I'm starting to smell kind of the age on that one because it's quite old and the top notes are oh, okay, they're still there, but they're a bit hazy. Ah, Melinda. Hey, Melly. How's it going, sweetie? La Mesha hails his hello, Dacob. Love you. Love you, too. Hi. 
And Johnny says, spray it, girl. Yes, I sprayed, I sprayed. Okay. Okay, let's let it dry down now. Mm, top notes, I have to say, Coco Mademoiselle Intense convinced me. Now, I have prepared for the occasion a little comparison chart. Um, so, yes. Okay. So let me tell you what they tell us. Um, they're giving us similar notes for like Eau de Parfum and uh, the Intense. So we have like our lemony, citrusy, orange notes as well. Um, but Intense is lacking the jazz. No, what is that thing? It's right, so like a Neroli. What is it? Neroli or tuberose or something? It's not tuberose. Um, orange blossom and orange and mandarin. Okay. So orange blossom is what is lacking on the list for um, Intense, but it's there for the Eau de Parfum. But And I know Olivier Paul, as opposed to his dad, Jacques, he loves the citrusy notes, the oranges and all that shebang. So I, he, he kind of is, is good at that. Um, but that is not what Chanel is known for. So, but it works in this case, like he managed to balance all those citrusy um, ingredients better than his dad did but then again you know jacques was not famous for his citrusy tones and oranges and it's there's vanilla in here you know interesting thing um i'm gonna lift them up so it's easier for you to understand what i'm talking about this one the old one well the old one the de parfum uh is is kind of listed to have ylang ylang this one doesn't seem to have ylang ylang on its list this one has a poponox this one doesn't seem to have a poponox but um, they both are heavy in patchouli and, but I have to say here, I'm, it's mellowed. It's not that aggressive patchouli that makes it kind of skanky and acidy on my skin, which I had on the Eau de Parfum, which is the main reason why I never wore it. You know what I mean? But actually, now like that, this one is a little bit old. That, now that this one is a bit older, I have many years. I kind of, I'm liking how it's drying down. But I, you know, I still get that. Yeah. And this one has hints. It's like, oh, okay. Intense has hints of low Chanel number no. five low in it. They have similarities in the opening. They really, really do. This does remind me, I mean, how, how long have I had this on now? For like five, six minutes? It really reminds me of Lo, the opening of Lo. Emilia says it's supposed to have a huge dose of patchouli. Um, yes, it's supposed to have a huge dose of patchouli. Uh, let's read what they actually say. A new facet, this one here, um, of the Coco Mademoiselle personality amplified by an extreme dose of patchouli and an amber accord that combines tonka bean and vanilla from Madagascar, a powerful, deep, irresistible composition. Patchouli is extreme luminous deep, infusing the fragrance with voluptuousness. What a word. The amber accord, warm, soft, and feminine, wrapping the fragrance in sensuality. Now, why sensuality only feminine, I wonder? Well, let's just put it this way. I could agree to it being feminine if feminine is an attribute that we could add to any gender. In that case, yeah, sure, why not? Count me in. I'm really liking it, guys. Oh my God, I am not disappointed so far. Now, mind you, this is just the first impressions, right? Ah, oh, mm. Uh, Melinda says, yes, I've heard the patchouli in Intense is not bad. Lucrezia, hi, Lucrezia, how you doing? Uh, yes, patchouli, tonka, and amber. Evangelos uh, Rados says, I already love it. Thank you, Jacob. Oh, so you've tried it already? Uh, Elke says, uh, hi, Elke. Um, I'm loving patchouli. Hope it's not too dry or old-fashioned. No, it's not. 
You know, no, it's not at all. It's not old fashioned at all. It's a softer, it's like what I wanted actually Coco Mademoiselle to be. You did good by us, Olivier. I never thought I would say it, but congratulations. Now, we're still in, in the opening notes, so we gotta give it some time. Now, you, you see, this is, okay. Yes, it's amazing to do a live unboxing. It's very rare and a live first impressions, especially if something's so important, as you know, Chanel is so important to me in my life. So I usually plan things and I structure them better. I usually have a better camera. I pre-record stuff. This is like, you know, super Spartan done live because I really wanted to share this moment with you, but also because I want to share with you something very important, which is how to understand if you like a perfume or not. You cannot allow yourself to judge a book by its cover alone. Meaning, don't let a perfume fool you because you might like the opening notes. Because what really shows the character of a fragrance is the dry down, which kicks in about half an hour to 40 minutes after you've sprayed the fragrance on your skin. It needs the time also to mix and blend with your own hormones, with your own essential oils, which your own skin does produce. So that's why we're doing this live, because we're, we're going to travel on this journey of experiencing and sensing this fragrance together. Now, Darren, I wish I would have said that at the beginning of this video, because whoever watches this video after we're done, they're going to be like, <laughs> they're going to be tuning out after two minutes while I'm trying to, at the beginning of the video, I was trying to find the chat anyway. Oh, Debbie, how do? Uh, um, Debbie, it's not how do, it's how you. Melinda and I are devastated. But anyway, I digress. Melly can explain it to you. Um, Lamesha says, yes, teach us day of lull. Yes, we preach, we preach. No, but I, guys, seriously, like I'm just saying this because we live in a social media driven quick, oh shit, I just dropped my bottle of water. We're back. Um, it, so everybody has the attention span of a fruit fly, yada, yada. You know me, I always repeat myself in that. Um, and it's true, everybody does. But this is the thing. Um, companies and brand marketing, you know, they have understood that that we're like, we, we don't have an attention span anymore, really. So everything has to convince us immediately. Heaven forbid, we had to kind of use our brain a little bit to understand a product, to understand whatever we're looking at, to understand what we really want, what we really like. I say no, stop to that. So a lot of the perfume houses are going to create a perfume where the opening notes are super pleasant and amazing, but then there's no substance in the dry down. And usually to have a good dry down, you need a sort of an aggressive opening. All of the best ones there have pretty heavy opening notes that are not the easiest to, to like. They're, they're aggressive and the aldehydes and a lot of them are so sparkly and metallic almost that you can't, you got, you can't, you got to wait a little bit before Perfect example, Chanel number no. five, the pure perfume. I also like the opening because I'm, I'm used to it. But once 40 minute mark has kicked in and the dry down settles on your skin, you're done. For the rest of your life, you will be hooked. You will never be able to, to forget it. You might not buy it again for whatever reason, but you will never forget it because the dry down of number five is a masterpiece. Um, but most fragrances created today, they just have a good opening note because you gotta be convinced very quick in the, in the shops to buy it and then you leave. And then when you come home one hour later, you're smelling them and you're like, wait a minute, this is not what I purchased. <laughs> right, it ain't because you only purchase it according to the top notes, duh. Okay. Elke says, I'm glad you like it. Such a fresh bottled ear. Well, let's see. Opening notes I do like. Um, Johnny says, lucky. <laughs> okay, so, so my old school Coco Mademoiselle is turning acidy, as is always the case with Coco Mademoiselle for me, has been until now. And it's 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 turn it's taking a curve towards a place where I gotta walk with very like plateau shoes so that I don't touch the perfume on the ground. Meaning I can't put it on my skin; it has to be only on my clothes because mixing with my skin it turns acidy. But with this one, it's as if 
I was told, okay, you and with Coco Mademoiselle, right? And then it turns acidy, but here it's telling me, no, you can also turn left. And if you turn left instead of right, you're gonna notice um, a softness to it. Like we have built inside of this fragrance a sort of a little cushion, like a cloud, um, that allows for that acidity that's on the soil to kind of fuzzy and fade into this new terrain you're walking on, which is the cloud. And um, hence, that's how it feels. It, it, it fades through me towards my nose. You know, it's, it doesn't, this one, the Eau de Parfum is like a knife. It keeps cutting me like a dagger every time I smell it, every time I sniff it on myself. But this one, the intense, doesn't cut me at all. It, it, it has that little cloud between me and, and the perfume constantly. So it always, it always kind of, you know, dampens the, the, the hit maybe if you, if you want, but does that make it, does that make it less powerful? Yes, it is. It's, I can already tell you now, this one is less powerful than the Eau de Parfum. So them calling this, um, Eau de Parfum Intense, mm, you, you don't fool me. I, I get it. Like, they, they, they were saving money again. <laughs> but doesn't matter. They've rounded it up with a vanilla that, um, that in this case works quite well. And you know I usually say vanilla and Dior go hand in hand, not really vanilla and Chanel. In this case, it, it's okay. Uh, Ricardo says, Chanel should have cloned... Mr. Jacques, Mademoiselle reminds me of my mother a bit too much. Still a good one. Uh, Sasha says, uh, Sa Sasha says, why are you so handsome, beautiful, and smart? I would marry in a second. You're, you're making me turn red. Don't do that. <laughs> Purple swag. Um, thoughts, uh, Tishy for Burberry. We're talking cocoa here. Um, Marla says, this is so exciting, can't wait to try it. Melinda, oh, proposal for Dayoblo. <laughs> Debbie asks, is, has Chanel went gourmand? I mean, they, they, they list like fruity notes uh, in intense, but um, I know, I don't think they went gourmand with this one. No, it's still quintessentially Chanel, but I don't know, it's, it's turning gelatinous in a way like a little bit jelly-esque now and how can jelly smell i don't know it's it's slightly damp you see what i mean you gotta wait for perfume to develop on your skin i'm not so sure this is gonna go good you know what i mean we gotta we gotta wait so let's talk while we wait but but my old eau de parfum is kind of really nice now, so I don't know what to tell you. It's definitely way stronger than the Intense. And, you know, this one has been kept outside of light. Um, yes, it has a couple of years on its back. It's been around the block. Um, but you can see the liquid is still very light. It hasn't turned. <laughs> look at my, uh, look at that. Ah, <laughs> the Chanel Inquisitor. Yes, yes. <laughs> so... It, it hasn't turned color, which means it hasn't turned darker. It's still a, a fresh, the ingredients in there are still fresh. The top notes are a bit meh, but um, it's intense. It is what it is. Lucrezia asks, gelatinous? No, you don't spell it like that. It's like jelly, gelatinous. That's even a word. Um, wait, so let's see. Okay, I re let's see the world through the filter of Coco Mademoiselle Intense. Are you ready? Are you ready to see it through the filter? But before we do that, please do thumb up this video if you're watching. Show us the love. I don't even see, um, let me see, how many thumbs up do we have? I can't see anything really. I only see how many people are watching. No clue, but thumb it up, thumb it up. Support, support your local, <laughs> your local thrift store. <laughs> so look, okay. Wait, okay, so this is, oh no, we don't want the logo. Thank you, Coco. Okay, so we're filtering everything through. Look at that. This is our Coco Mademoiselle filter. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Wait, let's do it even thicker, like, like that. So we get even more orangey, peachy hues. 
Yeah, you see, you can make art out of anything. You just need the right inspiration. So, filter. What a what an amazing filter, huh? Copy that Instagram. Look at that filter. It's the Coco filter. See, Chanel should do something like this, like that. You even have the intense written there, and you could filter yourself through it. All right. Well, that was that. Fun little moment. <laughs> the distortion. Yes, Kiyadora. She's loving the distortion. Drowning in Chanel. <laughs> totally. So it's not that intense on me. It's turning very, very soft, very elegant, very... Mm. There's a, a slight hint of vulgarity in there as well, which I don't dislike. I, I like when, when a perfume has also a little bit of something vulgar, vulgar in there. You know what I mean? Um, Sasha says, okay, okay, okay. Now on a perfume note, I do love this fragrance. I purchased it the other day and am obsessed. I really get a lot more of the patchouli. What do you think? You know, there's a bit of patchouli in there, but... And I'm not a fan of patchouli, but I have to say here it's it's quite toned down um, as as opposed to to the eau de parfum, in my personal opinion. Even though they say that this one has more, whatever. Well, they don't say this one has more than the eau de parfum. They just say it has a lot. But to me, and I've said this in another video of mine, um, nothing really beats uh, the patchouli in patchouli imperial from the Dior Privé line. To me. That's the only patchouli that I really, wait, I got a lot of stuff here hanging around. That's that's the only stuff that really kind of, um, oh, love is who I am. Hey there, loves, how you doing, sweetie? That is the only patchouli that I really consider sophisticated and earthy, and I described it as like walking through the forest, and it's just an amazing patchouli. All of these other patchoulis or sweet chulis, um, they're, they're kind of, they're there, they're, they're artificial to a, to a degree, where I'm not saying the Dior one isn't synthetic, probably is too. I don't know. I don't. I don't really care. It smells really good. So in this case, with the Chanel, I'm very aware of the syn syntheticity. Hope that was synthesis. Syn 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 syntheticity. Well, you got what I meant, right? Um, I'm aware of the synthetic aspect and nature of, of the patchouli in there. So I don't really take it that seriously because it, it always reminds me that it's there in a synthetic way. And it smells a bit plasticky. I think this perfume is perfectly launched right now uh, while they're launching their new spring summer 18 collection bags because they're all like super plastic like really hardcore plastic with pastel colors. I think this goes very well with that. Because it's a, it's an artificial patchouli. It's a plasticky patchouli. With all those fruity notes surrounding it. But it's not as sophisticated as the Eau de Parfum. Now, I am talking about the original formulation. Not the reformulated Eau de Parfum. So this one has more sophistication to me here. It's a difficult one to love. It's a difficult one to appreciate. I, I wear it very seldomly, but... <laughs> I, keep, I keep wanting to say to this one, it's intense. And I keep wanting to say about this one that it's mellow. Not that that means it's mellow in a bad way. Oh, you know what? It has slight hints of Coromandel in there as well, but very, 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 very far away. Because, of course, Coromandel also has patchouli, but a better quality patchouli. I'm going to have a pecan nut, by the way, because this is brain. This is food for the brain. And when I talk so much, I need a little bit of sugar and protein. Media says, no. Oh my God, the chat is going so fast. You can't expect a sophisticated perfume from Chanel with the name intense to it. You nailed it, Emilio. It's true. 
The second you put something like intense next to perfume, you know some something fishy is going on. Oh, I'm living for these pecan nuts. Mm. By the way, Emilio is the master of shadiness, darling. Ah, I have a little pillow under me, under my butt. Oh. Mm. Fun fact, Kidora says, I saw a clear plasticky Chanel inspired bag in another store about a year ago. Well, you know, they do that all the time. Chanel has done it in the 80s too, in the 90s, they're plasticky bags. <clears throat> the intense is not so powdery in the opening. Love is who I am, says. That is true. The opening was very citrusy, orangey, fresh. Um, also, I know they don't say there's any lang lang, but I, I kind of, in the opening, it was ilang lang ish and that's what made it like similar to me to low. The opening of Intense is similar to number five low to me. Well, Olivier made both of them, so go figure. Nick says, I tried it last week and still have my sample. Wore it this morning. I love it more than the original of Mademoiselle. Sasha says, just a slight increase. Uh, the Dexter says, hi, what are some of, um, of your non-designer uh, favorite fragrances? Well, every fragrance is designed by a perfume designer. What do you mean? Me like niche? Ugh. I've been telling you this forever, guys. Niche is the new mainstream. The discontinued mainstream fragrances are the new niche. <laughs> Amelia is still waiting for the Aura review. The reason I haven't done the Aura by Thierry Mugler review yet is because I'm working on, um, on a special... Um, let's call it framework to the whole thing. And it's not done yet <clears throat> because I have no time uh, to do it properly yet. Uh, GS says, semi-related, do you have any info on the rumored Bleu de Chanel intense? It's gonna be Bleu de Chanel Parfum and it should be around 50 ml and it should be coming out in a month or two. Uh, Lamesha Hale says, that makes, sense lol but i don't know what makes sense because i i don't even know what i said a minute ago um emilia says i'm starting to like it a lot oh wait wait so i missed the part where you said that you're you're basically wearing it now ah no amelia you're talking about aura you're starting to like aura a lot mm, okay um wait where am i smell To me, it's a softer version. It's like a softened version of the, uh, the intense is the softened version of the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is very 2000s. It, you know, if you can envision the fashion back then and the lines and the silhouettes and the way it kind of straight cuts through you, that, that's what Mademoiselle, Coco Mademoiselle smells like to me. The intense is like a 2018 version of we need to be more subtle. We need to be more consumer oriented. We need to be more friendly. We need to be more pleasant. We need to have less of an opinion. So it's interesting to put the word intense in front of it uh, because it's, it's easily lovable. As I said, to me, the Eau de Parfum is intense because that's intense. You got to be able to handle it. You got to be able to deal with it. It's a lot of work, uh, but uh, the the actual intense is not a lot of work. In a world where smoking in public places has become illegal mostly, you can pull this one off. In a world where smoking was still allowed, you needed something like this to kind of overpower the smell of tobacco. And I'm saying this, remember when I did my Poison Girl review, I said, oh, this reminds me of the concept of, you know, like in the 70s, opium or um, poison in the 80s. You know, back then people would smoke everywhere, even in airplanes, like everywhere. It was just a normal thing to smoke. And for those of you who have forgot that it was like that, you could also watch the Mad Men series and they kind of 
revisited that 60s era or 50s, 60s era where you could also smoke in offices at work and stuff like that. And um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I love this purple and uh, go the gold and the squiggle. Um, what I'm trying to say is certain fragrances were developed for certain eras. And of course, throughout the decades, times change, moral changes, the way we perceive the world and, and the way we perceive ourselves changes. So hence, I understand also the need that mm, brands have to reformulate older fragrances because they want to make them um, they want to make them compatible with the times we live in now. Of course, this this what does this mean? This means that the people that used to love what they used to love, all of a sudden they feel betrayed because they don't have their old school perfumes anymore. So it's it's painful. Um, but many brands really see it vital to to keep updating and and kind of tweaking the formulas. And but I, don't ask me like why is a certain ingredient more fashionable in a certain decade rather than another decade. I mean, I have here the only uh, Olivier Polge uh, Les Exclusives fragrance reformulated or reconcentrated rather than reformulated that, that, I, that I love. And look at that. It's almost, it's like halfway through. It's Gardenia, right? And I was, I, I, I was explaining this many times in other videos, like, why is this the only one? Well, first of all, there, not much could have gone wrong with... Um, Gardenia was, was created, Ernest Beau's Chanel's Gardenia was created in the 20s. So we already now, uh, we already with Jacques Polge's uh, Eau de Toilettes, we did not have the original Gardenia smell, the original ingredients. Back in the 20s, they did not have the technology for certain synthetics uh, or, or what, what not that we have today. So certain, so I guess it smelled more artificial back then than it does today, but of course we know that we cannot extract the essence of a pure gardenia, so we have to use synthetics anyway. And um, a lot of other flowers were used to recreate what a gardenia smells like. Um, but since the 1920s, this particular Chanel fragrance has went through so many different changes variations, reformulations, reconcentrations. There is the Pure Parfum, there's the Eau de Cologne, there's the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette alone has been reformulated several times throughout the decades. You know, it's not like the last Jacques Paul uh, Eau de Toilette uh, concentration we had was the, the same Eau de Toilette as it was throughout the decades. No, it wasn't, it was also changing. And then we, and then we get an, an Eau de Parfum. And the reason why I think Olivier didn't mess this one up is because I believe that somewhere throughout those decades, there was um, already set in place a sort of vision, like a formula structure for an eventual eau de parfum of Gardenia. And I think Olivier kind of took that and maybe he tweaked it a little, but I feel like there's not a lot of Olivier Polge in here. Uh, it's, it's an intense experience, the eau de parfum Gardenia. But I'm loving it. In fact, today in the Chanel boutique, when I got this thing, I was like, listen, I know you have these in 400 milliliter bottles. They come with a little extra sprayer, 7.5 ml that you could refill. But before you release those for super marked up price, you also, for a short limited amount of time, you released 400 ml bottles without the little sprayer and they cost way less. Can you still get your hands on that for me? I asked the lady and the lady was like, I'll call you. So she's going to call me for that and the number five hand cream. Okay. Now. Intense is a bit vulgar in, in this point of the game. Um, it's okay, but it's a bit vulgar. There's something in it, like there's a... It doesn't smell that powdery on me. And, and I think the vanilla could have been more vanilla-ish. It's turning kind of, there's something fishy about it. Not that it smells like fish, well, maybe a little. Algae. 
Sasha says, if you love Chanel's gardenia, you would have died for the original jungle gardenia deco. Oh my God. Jungle gardenia. GS, 3% of the population may sneeze if exposed to oak moss. So let's ban it for everyone. Yeah, right? Because heaven forbid, and this is something interesting, because you know, we're talking here, this was like, the subtext was the IFRA regulations and how they're like making certain ingredients illegal. So you have to create synthetics of it. But then the pharmaceutic industry, you see, plays a vital role because then they kind of create their synthetic versions. They patent it. They have a copyright on it. So they could charge whatever money they want by selling this patented copywritten synthetic version of the original. Let's have a nut. Hmm. So Sasha says salmony. Yeah. Sasha, you might be kidding. But it is salmony. And let me tell you what it is about salmon. You know, I'm not talking smoked salmon. Raw. Raw salmon. You know that sometimes it can have that metallic smell? That fishy metallic smell? I get that a little bit in here. It's like a it, it's wet and it's the patchouli, I guess. It's the synthetic patchouli. Oh my God, Sasha says, yes, I get that sweet salmon fishy smell sometimes. Bingo. Thank you for that, Sasha. We credit Sasha for the salmony note in um, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. It's there. Like raw sushi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Emilia says, <laughs> you're so stupid, I love you. <laughs> He's like, fishy? Well, manatee is shook. <laughs> ah. Now, I, I'm dying to do what I'm going to do at the end of this video. I planned it already, but I, I, I want to do it now already. But I can tell you already what it is. Um, Sasha says, no one else gets that. No, I get it totally, the fish. And I might like grow to appreciate the fishiness of it. But what I'm dying to do is I have to wait for the dry down, dry down. And then I'm going to add a layer of gardenia on top because just like, you know, like you have your like smell buds in your nose or whatever. And just by smelling it, I still have it in my nose. And then as I smell this on top, wow, they mix together so well. Mm. Mm. I think we have a little something, something going on. There might be some sort of, some sort of, um, Liaison, a dangerous, dangerous liaison between these two happening pretty soon. So, but I, you know what, guys? Mm, I'm today. I don't know what it is. It never happened to me before. But I'm really loving the eau de parfum, Coco Mademoiselle. It's raw. It's edgy. It's in your face. It keeps slapping you and cutting through you every time you smell it. Like it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a bitchy one, you know, from the early two thousands. But now that the other one is there, now that I understand the direction like Chanel is heading to, I miss, I miss this kind of attitude. And I'm getting oily. So for the occasion, let's retouch. See, this is I'm doing live makeup here too. Look at that, tabbing it up. This is, by the way, the white versions of super light makeups are um, for the Asian market, for the LeBlanc series, but I made a video on this too. It's just that I have oily skin, so after like half an hour of blabbering, we gotta retouch. How does that look, better? Less oily? So it's as simple as that. People ask me like, oh, what do you do? Nothing, I just like pat a ton of powder on my freaking face. All right, so as I was saying, I really like the Eau de Parfum today. Now, this brings me to probably having to go back to Chanel because you've been talking about the Eau de Toilette to kind of go for the Eau de Toilette, like retry the Eau de Toilette because the Eau de Parfum for me, it is what it is. It works today. Ah, it, Chanel, tweak that fishy note out if you can, because this is the first edition now. Oh, okay. I see the glitter even on the sticker. It's like a glossy sticker. It's like one of those stickers you, you would get in school. Your teacher would give you like a sticker. It was like, you've been good today. Here's a little star. Oh, that was my Mickey Mouse on helium voice. 
um, Melinda loves the Leblanc series, but I'm not talking about the Leblanc like creams and stuff. I'm talking about the Asian uh, uh, makeup uh, Leblanc blah 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 series. Mia says, "Nah, Coco Mademoiselle is not for me. Coco all the way. Yes, of course, Coco all the way. But they're two different worlds. I mean, we can't mix Coco with Coco Mademoiselle. They're really." Again, different times, different periods. Coco is from the 80s, and Coco was supposed to be the sophisticated Chanel version of the 70s opium. Like, there's a different game they were playing back then, you know? Um, and, I'm, and I always say this, guys. It's about the moral of the time. Like, we're so quick to judge everything that's happening around us, even, like, from the past. But you can't if you don't know have the knowledge of the past. And by having the knowledge of the past, I don't mean, like, having read a book about the facts. When did World War One or Two start or end? And what happened during it? No, I mean, what was the moral of the time? Because you'd be surprised most of the times what you consider... Uh, morally unacceptable today was morally acceptable in the past and vice versa. Yeah, vice versa. Certain things that were back in the day morally unacceptable today are all of a sudden morally acceptable. So that's why, you know, also when we judge perfumes, we have our own sensitivity and sensibility, like what we like, what we don't like, what fits our character, what doesn't fit our character, what fits our skin chemistry, what doesn't. But then also, as I always say, perfumes have they are like keys that trigger memory patterns that are rooted deep down inside our souls. It transcends just the pure experiences you have had in your lifetime on this earth now. We don't know if there's reincarnation or not. Who knows? But right now, hence that's why I say like certain memories unlock, certain perfumes unlock certain memories that I haven't lived in this lifetime. But how how can I have these memories then? How can how can a a fragrance form a certain vision in my head, a vivid, lucid dream vision of something I have lived from another time and another place, and even another planet maybe. So that's why I consider perfumes to be incredibly powerful um, tools that we should all use to to connect more to, to our roots. And by our roots, I don't mean just who you are in this life, this one life. I'm talking about something that transcends time. It transcends all of this worldly um, history and past and pattern of life, you know, it goes really beyond that and lets you travel. And that's why when I do have the dough, I, I buy a perfume. Um, I, I don't see it as luxury. I see it as a necessity. I see it as a vital element in my life. I need fragrances always in my life because they elevate my soul. It's not that they make me feel, it's not as simple as saying, oh, it makes me feel rich it makes me feel successful it makes me feel younger again it makes me feel like a business power person no it's not that at all perfumes keep me connected to all those doors that i have inside my soul you know and, and they keep reminding me of of um so many histories and stories and possibilities that are within oneself so I think it's a wrong approach to wear perfume in, in order to um, convince somebody else about some aspect of ourselves. That's why I always say wear perfume for yourself, not for others. I wear perfume for myself. Yes, sometimes I am aware that certain fragrances are very intense. And if I do wear them, people are not going to be want to be close to me. And if there is a day where I want to be left alone, I usually play that strategic game. But most of the time, it's not even about that. It's just like me. Uh, literally loving the experience, loving the journey. Every time I put on a perfume, it's not about showing off to somebody that I have a nice perfume. Every time I put on a perfume is literally a roller coaster ride for me because it just takes me up and down these hills and mountains and places where, quite frankly, without a fragrance, I probably wouldn't be able to go. I would be able to go if I lived completely immersed in nature and I could smell the grass, the trees, the mushrooms. All, all of those natural elements, but you know, living in a cement bunker, it's kind of difficult. So you need to you need to recreate your own um, forests of the islands, Bois des Îles, and uh, your own magic. A lot of magic. So yeah. Um, Odorteca says, "I love Coco Mademoiselle, but I'm." Uh, Chance or the Parfum Boy, 
Uh, for me, it's more in your face with more attitude and boldness. Jacob, do you have you tried the Pure Parfum version of Coco Mademoiselle? Yes, I have. I don't own it, but I have tried the Pure Parfum of, of, of Mademoiselle. Um, it's very intense. Now, that's where I sense a lot of patchouli, way more than intense and way more than uh, uh, than the Eau de Parfum. And the Eau de Parfum is actually getting powdery and less acidy, miraculously. I don't know how that happened. But the intense... <sighs> Wait, let me have a, another um, pecan nut. Instead, I should be smelling coffee, actually. Coffee beans to neutralize the nose between one sniff and the other. But it's okay. It's pleasant. I, and, and it has, like, it opens up as low a little bit, number five low. And now as it's slowly drying down, I sense more and more of, um, I sense more and more of, um, what's it called? Coromandel. Yeah. Um, Fluffy Dragonite. Oh, what a cute name. Hi. Um, Jacob, did you ever buy the pure perfume of a gardenia? What are your thoughts on it? No, it's on my list though. I have like a little, um, I have several actually. Ceramic, little Chanel ceramic kind of tester things where they kind of dip it into it and then you just perfumes all over the place and I have it in my wardrobe. And I have tried it. But I have to tell you, as much as I love the pure perfume of Gardenia, the Eau de Parfum has something slightly vul, and you know I love the little vulgarities here and there. I mean, it's in my nature. Mm, it works for me. What did I smell the other day? Ah! It's similar. You know what? The vanilla and the... We're, we're heading towards the dry down. The vanilla mixed with... I don't want to say with the patchouli. I don't know. There's, there's something in there that softens the vanilla. And it's a similar take on vanilla that I sense in Addict, in Dior's Addict. Oh, Dortega says, my favorite channel is number 22, I must say. Oh, that's a good one. I love number 22. I have a bottle over there in the corner. Um, Johnny says, cheers. Are you leaving us? Or are you sending us hearts? If you're leaving, have a fun day. Mm. Elizabeth is just sitting here sniffing my Chanel. Isn't that fabulous? It's our little Chanel corner. <laughs> Samantha Ferrari says Tonka. Ah, you think it's the Tonka bean that kind of mellows everything. Oh, Stupan, how you doing, sweetie? Hello, love. I'm really intrigued by your talks about gardenia. I need some white flowers in my life. Yes, we all need some. I mean, look, I'm loving white flowers, floral in general. Floral, not just for spring. It Floral, always groundbreaking. Um, but listen, where is it? I don't know where it is. Okay. You want a scoop? Do you want a scoop? If you want a scoop, I want to see those thumbs up. Thumb up the video. I do my own combination, says Emma Helios. Two thirds Blue de Chanel de Parfum and one third number five Au Premier. And everybody asks me, what is it? Is It's amazing. Interesting combination. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> hey, tea, forever fragrant kid. Yas, honey. Hey, sweetie. All right, thumb up the video, guys. People are going for drinks. What do you mean? Where are they going? Wine goes well with Chanel. <laughs> Blue horse, yellow cow. How are you doing, sweetie? Uh, I'm making friends with Gardenia Eau de Parfum. Thanks to you. Yes, I'm telling you, it's a goodie. Cardmaster, thumbs it up. Yes, thumb up, guys. Thumbs up the videos. Jacob, you turned off the liked and dislikes. I did? Oh, that's why I can't see it? <laughs> Thanks, Emilio. I don't know if I... How did I... How can I... I didn't turn anything off. Silly me. I mean, you see how technically savvy I am, basically? I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. Well then, in spirit, thumb up the video in spirit. Okay, so this is what I'm going to say. Okay, so I've okay, so let's the, the scoop. 
talking a stupman talking about uh, florals right now i don't know this is maybe a little bit of a niche information for for y'alls because not everybody i don't know how much you know my love for the poison range of christian dior but the only one i can't really handle on my skin is the pure poison reformulation I liked the original one, um, Pure Poison, but the stuff that they sell now just really turns very bad on my skin, super bad. But I like the idea of Pure Poison, which is also a kind of a white floral fragrance, if we're talking about white floral fragrances. So I've been doing some research and guess which one is said to, off, to be like Pure Poison? older version of it, but better, more lasting, and a bit softer at the same time. Any guesses? Let's see, it's a quiz. Emilio loves pure poison. Well, on your skin it works then. I mean, I like it out of the bottle. I like the original formulation out of the bottle, but on my skin, tragic. Uh, so let's see, um, I'm not like, I just bought a pure poison today. <laughs> Great. No, listen, I'm not saying it ain't good. I'm just saying my chemistry doesn't work with it, but I wanted to work with it. So I've been doing research, asking myself and others, um, like what could be a similar white floral that might work better for me? Uh, Emilia says, Michael Kors original. No, my... No, no, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm trying so hard to stay poised. Um, okay, this is really difficult because this, it's not a niche brand, but it kind of is because I, I think I mentioned it only once in one of my videos. Cardmaster says carnal flower. No, 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 no. Um, YSL opium is where it's at. No, YSL opium has nothing to do with white floral, Sasha. It's a very heavy oriental uh, opium. Paul Gunn says, Diptyque Toussaint, tuberose? No, 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 no. Cardmaster says, I love tuberose. I love tuberose too, and I love carnal flower, but um, carnal flower to me is not really a white floral. It's a night floral, and it's also the melon in it, and it's a fruity floral in a dry way. It's amazing, but it's very complex. Um, Samantha says, can we have another clue? Elizabeth says, Alexander McQueen. Oh, I'm loving the Alexander McQueen Eau de Parfum very much. It's a beautiful floral as well, and I use it a lot, but there's a lot of pepper in there. Um, no, that, that it's not pure poisonish. So, okay, well, let me give you a hint. Um, okay, I have it here. Oh my God, let me show you the side of it. it I, I'm, you know? You know how we did it also when I did on Fleur de Chanel. I was I showed the side, and then like let's see if you let's see if you guess. <laughs> that was that. Uh, Scent says Paris YSL. No, Forever Fragrance. Okay, Fracat. No, Fracat doesn't have. Um... Oh, sorry, the chat is delayed. I mean, my video is delayed. Um... Cardmaster says Fracat. No, Fracat comes in a black bo uh, bl box. It's it's not. Cardmaster says Creed. No, it's not Creed. Um, GS says Deco. I hope you review Blue Pure Perfume. Signed, your hetero fan base representative. <laughs> okay. How about um, a living creature fan base representative? Why do we always have to sexualize everything? Um, Nick says, Mark Jacobs, no. Forever Fragrant Kid, just meant for a white floral. Yeah, no. Light blue, Sasha, no. Emilio can't recognize the box. Okay, I know, it's really, a, it's, it's a tricky one. You see it has a little pearly thin about it. Wait, let me show you the other side. I can't, okay, you want to see the top? <laughs> Living creature fan base is card master. Uh, Forever Franklin says, "Is it a Louis Vuitton?" No, I can't be a Louis Vuitton because Louis Vuitton comes in round things. This is not. Um, this is not round. Card master says, "Narciso Rodriguez." No, it's not. Spring flowers by Creed is very white flowery. Elke says, "Yes, but this is not it." Kiadora says, "Mugler." No, it's not Mugler. Forever Franklin, Lalique. No, it's not Lalique, but it has to do something with jewels. 
So you're, there's another hint. It has something to do with... Now, Lalique does glass jewels. This brand does real jewels. Sent, says Tom Ford, no. Melinda says, oh, shady. Yes. Stuttman says, uh, Kilian, voulez-vous? Oh, so nice. No, it's not Kilian. Cardmaster, Cartier, no. Forever Fragrance says, Cartier, no. Elizabeth says, the shade. We quit, lol. <laughs> Cardmaster, Bulgari, no, but Bulgari does do jewels, but there's another brand that does jewels. Marla Costa, yes, it's Boucheron. You have the logo. There you go. You've guessed the brand. No, Kedar, it's not Tiffany. <laughs> Fero says Dior. No. So it's Boucheron. Boucheron. You know, I did uh, how to pronounce French um, designer names with, with my friend Paul, and uh, we did the Boucheron. It's really hard to pronounce for me. Boucheron. 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 And... Um, You can see it here. And let me take, so I found this one. I haven't opened it yet. Why I haven't opened it yet? Because I'm planning to do another video. So that was the scoop. Let me just take this price sticker off it because whoever in that, it was a TJ uh, Maxx um, and um, you know, they don't really care about aesthetics, so they put the price tag right on the name of the perfume. <laughs> so I can't show you the name of the perfume. Ah, geez, Louise. This really, wait. Can you see it? It's Jaipur bracelet. I'm trying to take this, the, the price tag off. There you have it. Jaipur bracelet. Aha. Uh -huh. Aleka says, I have this and love it so much. <laughs> Melinda says, I really screwed up, lol. Kiedora says, I don't even know how the pure poison smells like. It, it's, it's a great smell. It's a white floral. But anyway, so I'm planning on doing... Stupan says, honey, we don't care that it costs $29.99. Uh, honey, it didn't cost $29.99. It cost $24.99. <laughs> But it was covering like half of the name, like it was like there. But now you can at least see a little bit. So yeah, it was twenty four ninety nine, and I thought for that money, we could really test it together. But I'm planning on doing like a, a video. Just <laughs> about my bad. Yeah, you're bad. You over you overcharge your 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 TJ Maxx perfumes, darling. There, I like scratched it off completely so you could see the name. So I'm, um, it, and it's not in the shape of a bracelet. I wish, but Boucheron is famous also for their gorgeous bracelets. There is another Jaipur perfume in the shape of an actual bracelet. This is a full-on bottle, uh, but it has like kind of a jewel stopper. Really pretty. I love, I love um, Jaipur for men. Well, I loved the original formulation. Ah. Stupman says Jaipur pour homme is wonderful. It's it's amazing, and I had the actual metal container with a glass bottle inside a really heavy one they don't make that anymore because they're saving money uh, and they've reformulated it but i really really like jaipur pour um emilia says i don't remember it smelling like pure poison huh. emma says did you try mademoiselle intense yet emma we've been talking about mademoiselle intense the whole time what do you mean sweetie <laughs> i have the intense here with a fishy after note and i have the eau de parfum here To me, in the dry down, my dears, I have to say that Eau de Parfum wins for me. So now it's been long enough. Yeah, the original Eau de Parfum of Mademoiselle, to me, in the dry down is better than Coco Mademoiselle Intense. This one is more vanilla y, vanilla ishy. Patchouli vanilla is she? While this one stays more aggressive, artificially aggressive, and oddly enough, I never really enjoy this one on my skin. But now that I've smelled this one, this one kind of made me reappreciate the 
the character of this one even more. So I say this one to me wins. This one wins in the opening notes. This one wins in the dry down. The eau de parfum wins in the dry down for me and the intense wins in the opening notes. And you see this tendency of these perfume brands, what they do, they work really hard to create a good opening note. The dry down, however, I'm not liking that fishy note in there. I love eating fish. Don't get me wrong. No pun intended. We're talking fish. <laughs> but I'm 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 liking the dry down more on on the eau de parfum guys. You know what I mean? So let's see. Um Mina says Oh my God, Koblai Khan smells like <laughs> very interesting perfume. All righty. Kiedora says, I saw one knockoff of the Chanel number no. five for like $7 and it was called Shami Shamili. <laughs> oh, Shamili. Melinda says, no intense for me. The dry down, guys, the dry down. I'll experiment with it in the next days, you know, like there's, there's patchouli in there for sure. And that dry down, but it just, it doesn't like deliver, you know, like a Jacques Paul's dry down would deliver Olivier Paul's dry down. It's easy, pleasant, but you know, that's the thing. It's also very, very soft and very bland. So it makes me want to respray it again, like only after like half an hour or 40 minutes or one hour pad, I don't even know how much time passed. You know, it makes me want to like respray it and I don't want to, have to respray it immediately now because I want to see how it lives until it's like off of my skin. But it's okay. I'll wear it. I mean, this one I'm definitely going to wear more than I ever wore this one because you can see in all these years I only used up that much of it, really. I'm definitely going to wear this one. I'm probably going to finish the bottle too. Will I be repurchasing? No, I don't think so. Out of the bottle, um, I smell the fruity notes. I smell the juicy concoction of it, like those fruity, juicy notes. It, they really made this one smell good in the opening notes. They really want you to buy it. They really want you to like it immediately, the second you smell it. But it's the dry down that's a problem, you see, because in the dry down, this perfume lacks in character. And I don't want my Chanel to lack in character. I want my Chanel to be there for me, with me, all the way. You know, I had this tendency when the dry down of a fragrance, you know, to kind of, I don't know, some of you maybe know this trick already. Um, what I do is when the perfume gets really blended well in with the skin, I would kind of with my nose, like, like blow on it, like heat it up really close and then inhale. Wow. You open up the molecules of the perfume and then when you when you like heat it up and inhale immediately, you get high. Literally, it, it's it's try it out sometime. So you spray. Never rub your perfumes. You spray. You wait an hour and then you heat it up and you inhale. And when I heat this one up with my nose, it doesn't really deliver much. Again, I get that salmony fishy note. But that's it. Ah, and when I warm up the Jacques Paul's version crystals open up bubbles open up and, and you get that warmth that that heart which which is lacking in intense i have to say um stupma says speaking of dry down when we were discussing white flowers i found and spritzed the sample of kilian voulez vous coucher avec moi i'm really liking it oh good media says i guess they no longer smell of fish when they dry down no, they still do. They still do. Carolina, I mean, Intense does. Carolina says, just joined, have been waiting for this video, and I almost missed it. Don't worry if you missed it, because you could rewind it, you know, and watch it later again. Kedora says, love is who I am. I got to check Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Invisible Girl is laughing. Forever Fragrance says, oh, nice tip. I just tried that with my gardenia. Mm, oh, yes, with gardenia? Girl, it works especially well when you warm up gardenia after a while. 
and also what 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 gets what gets me like I literally faint is when you do it with Chanel number no. five, the pure perfume. Also with the auto toilette. Oh my god, with the auto toilette. After even after two hours, I I spray it even here, and then I like I just blow on it and I like smell it again and it's just wow and actually oof, I had gardenia here the whole day and I had a little bit left over and when I warmed it up and it hit me but all right so that's my story you know um oh forever fragrance is wearing Chanel gardenia 2007 nice love is am says allure is also very understated yes um underestimated not understated allure is quite intense in my opinion Fedor says, I know this is literally out of the concept, but what do you think about the new Dior era fashion? I really love it. I mean, I'm obsessed with Chanel, but lately Dior um, is calling my name. Ah, I'm, you just got to go to my Instagram to know my opinion on that. And I've made a lot of videos on Dior already. So on my YouTube channel, so you can just search for those and you're going to see my opinions on that. But more videos are to come. Um, Elke says, please try Rose Noir by, by, Red, by Redo. Uh, Paul Gunn, I've been layering Molecule 1 with Diorella Eau de Toilette this week. I think it works. Does it sound revolting? No, especially because like Molecule 1, it always smells more for other people than it does to the person wearing it. So I guess that's, I could work. It's kind of a gentle blend. Uh, Debbie, uh, Melinda says, you should call the video fish law. Love is who I am. Loves. Debbie says, ah, amongst the lavender, the fish. Yes. Elke says, fish smell is a no-go. All for me on my skin. I'm not, guys, don't get me wrong. It's not like, oh, one-to-one -one smell of fish. But there's something fishy about it. That's all I got to say. Now we're going to get to the point where this dry down is not convincing me. So, sorry, Chanel. Coco Mademoiselle Intense opening a bomb out of the bottle a bomb while it's going towards the dry down it starts mellowing down on you and then their fishy aspect kicks in and the dry down is very meh now i'm going to add gardenia on top of this let's see how that layering works i did very see i see i did it from afar because i don't want to overpower uh, one with the other Interesting. You know how the patchouli note now through the gardenia gets a more smoky touch? Hmm. Oh, Debbie says, congrats on 21K, Deco. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you, Emilio. Thank you, Melinda. <laughs> uh, Sasha says, intense has a high order of parfum, but it doesn't last as long as the original. Exactly. It doesn't. To me, it doesn't. Um. Forever Fragrant Kid loves the experiment, yes. And I'm going to add a little bit of the intense opening notes. Oh, the sprayer is beautiful. You get this like little cloud, fuzzy cloud. Okay. Wait, now they're, they're overpowering each other, damn it. Okay. And we did this a little? Okay. Fascinating. Let's let it tone down a little bit. Aleka as Kitsi says, congrats. Thank you so much, sweetie. We're going to eat another pecan nut. Eat your nuts, guys. At least like four to five nuts a day. Keep the doctor away. They're full of proteins and healthy omega-3 fats and oils, and we need those to stay healthy. I usually eat two. I eat two walnuts, two hazelnuts a day. Well, usually two pecan nuts, now more because I'm filming. Like, I have literally, like, a set of nuts. It's like little, you know, like, people drink their vitamin pills every day. I do the nat natural thing. Organic nuts. Mm. Emma says, have you tried Frédéric Mal uh, fragrances? Thoughts, I adore portrait of a lady. Uh, yes, Emma. I have on carnal flower. And I love it. Uh, Amelia says, Mademoiselle is already intense. There was no reason for the intense version. They shouldn't have called it intense. They should have called it soft or light. But the tendency of all of these brands is to not go... You see, this is the funny thing. In the 80s, when an eau de parfum would come out, or in the 90s, when an eau de parfum would come out, it would be 
more intense. And then somewhere towards the 2000s something, people started liking eau de toilettes more, like softer versions. So the brand started discontinuing in many cases eau de parfums and were just re releasing eau de toilettes. Now, for some strange reason, um, people like eau de toilettes, but the brands think that they have to call them eau de parfums to justify the higher cost to their clientele. So they sell you an eau de toilette for like an eau de parfum. I know that there's regulations in terms of how things have to be concentrated, but that doesn't mean that the essence, the oils you're using are of good quality. You could have a higher percentage of some essential oil, but that doesn't mean that that oil has to be the better quality that it used to be when it was an eau de toilette. You know what I mean? So in fact, what we're getting today is eau de toilettes with an intense labeling. When in, which is which is ridiculous because what it what it should be is you know we should just call it by its name. People want softer, more pleasant, easygoing, easier to use fragrances. That's what they want. So this thing that they call Coco Mademoiselle Intense should have been called Coco Mademoiselle Soft or Coco Mademoiselle Light or the lighter eau de parfum, which is exactly what it is. It's a lighter version of an eau de parfum of the Coco Mademoiselle eau de parfum. You know what I mean? Catch my drift? You do. Good. It's very Barbie meets sophistication patchouli, um, like blending gardenia and Coco Mademoiselle. I'm really liking it. Because the gardenia elevates it in quality, and the Coco Mademoiselle kind of drags the gardenia a little bit into the dirt, so it makes it more rounded, more earthy, but bubbly at the same time. And it, it's kind of sweeter. It's like, Emilio says, or no release at all. Well, you know, they want to make their money. I get it. But I don't know if the strategy, I mean, for now it's working because all the people think, oh, okay, it says eau de parfum. Okay, it has to be stronger than eau de toilette. I'm going to get it. I understand why it costs more. And it's a trick that they use, you know, and that's how they, oh, let me pour some water. Uh, it's a trick that they use and hence, you know what I mean? And that's how they um, make you spend more money. Money, money. Ugh. But there will ever only be one poison. Look at that. What is this? 30 ml? 30 milliliter Esprit de Parfum bottle. Old school. We're talking old school. A little splash stopper. Ah. <laughs> now that's what I call intense. Chanel, Olivier, that's what I call intense. Not? Maybe. Get out of money! <laughs> Elizabeth says, the opening makes you buy instantly. That's why you always wait for the dry down before purchasing. Yes, Elizabeth. I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, but good that you're bringing it up again. Um, I don't know if you were with us, Elizabeth, at the beginning. But I explained that as well. Always wait for the dry down before you purchase a perfume. You know me. I do everything Chanel. I experiment it. I also do it for you guys. I do it so that we can have a community that understands like, what's going on. So I test it. And of course I'm going to buy it. What am I supposed to do? And I'll use it. I'm totally going to use it. Um, especially mixed with gardenia. Hmm. Awkwardly. The two together tend to have a, a smoky, there's a, there's a something smoky going on in there, like a smoky afterthought. But it's interesting how, you know, now all these brands are like playing uh, the Joe Malone card on us. You know, they're like, oh no, you can like, our exclusives are meant to be mixed. No, they're not. They never were. The Chanel is exclusives were not meant to be mixed, but now that Dior Privé is doing it, that now that they've released their, like now, since quite some time, they've released their like essential oils, elixir oils that you're supposed to combine with the actual uh, Les Exclusives fragrances, um, with the Privé line fragrances, and then mix and match them. Now, all of a sudden, you go to a Chanel boutique, perfume beauty boutique, and then they tell you, well, now we're going to show you uh, how you could mix uh, let's say gardenia with Boisil or with beige boy with uh, Coromandel, and I'm like, 
six years ago, had I come into your boutique, you would have never told me that. You would have never tried to sell me two bottles of perfume, different ones, because you think you would kind of tell me that they could fit well on my skin. No, Chanel was about simplicity. Before you leave the house, take an accessory off yourself rather than put one on again. You know what I mean? It, it's counterproductive in terms of the philosophy of Chanel is like, oh, blending and mixing all the range of the fragrances. That's just cheap marketing ploy uh, to, to make you purchase more. Uh, now, granted, some perfumes mixed together do create interesting effects and some of them mixed together might blend in very well with your skin. I'm not saying that ain't the case always. It can work, but you cannot generalize. You can't go and say, you can't lie to people. You can't tell them, oh, by the way, you know what? Um, Chanel is exclusives were created to be mixed and matched. No, they were not. Nobody can tell me they were. Hmm. Alka says, my one and only perfume, old school, is Midnight Poison. Only this one. I'm so sad it's been discontinued. Does anybody know the true tea about why Midnight Poison has been discontinued? Like, what is it? Is it because some ingredient was, like, becoming super rare, super costly, or super illegal? Or was it just not selling? Because I don't think it wasn't selling. I think it was selling. Um, Melinda says, I love Jo Malone Orange Blossom. <laughs> Forever Fragrant Kid says, Preach Jacob. Emilia says, Alka, try L by Yves Saint Laurent. Very similar to Midnight Poison. Alka says, I have both and don't agree. Emilio says, really? Haha. -ha. Forever Fragrant Kid says, I love Orange Blossom. Alka says, this special note of Midnight Poison is not in L. Debbie says, boy has been reformulated too, I'm sure. Yes. So many say he has, he, it has, but I have the first edition of it and I haven't used it up yet. So I, I don't know. I haven't smelled it again. Stuckmann says, less is more. Two bottles fit better in the black camellia bag, better than one. And was there, was there, was there a pop reference in there? A cultural reference that I'm missing? <laughs> Amelia says, I think Midnight Poison wasn't selling. Hmm. And now it goes for like triple its retail price on the secondary market. Um, Fairy Fragrant Kid says, no, I don't know the tea about Midnight Poison. Do tell. I have a small decant of Midnight Poison. Lucky, lucky you, tea. Paul Gunn says, my Chanel number 22 Eau de Toilette has been deliberately left out in the light and is slowly oxidizing and getting darker. The fragrance has really been improving. I know you have your reservations on most EDTs. Paul, I don't have any reservation on the EDTs. My reservations are on the EDPs. So I don't know what you're talking about. Or did you mis mistype? Because I love the Les Exclusives Eau de Toilettes. It's the Eau de Parfums that I'm not a fan of. But I also say always about number 22, also about Queer de Russie, and also about Chanel number no. 5. I like to keep mine in the sun because then they age nicely. Chanel number no. 5, in particular, the Eau de Parfum. I, I like to put that in the in the sun. Ah, Paul says, sorry, I mean EDPs, yes, yeah. Okay, so Paul, so what you're trying to say is you have an Eau de Parfum number 22. Yeah, but you see, it's similar. Number 22, Cuir de Russie, Bois de Zille, and Gardenia are the four that Olivier and Jacques both did not make. All four are Ernest Beau creations from the 20s that have been reformulated throughout the decades over and over and over and over again. So it's not like, you know, it's not like we can compare directly the original source with what is out now. That's why to me, it's a bit more acceptable what Olivier is doing to the Eau de Parfums, to Gardenia in particular. Because um, already what Jacques Polge gave to us in Eau de Toilette form and in pure perfume form are not the original formulations from the 20s, obviously. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm, particularly angry about Chanel discontinuing the eau de toilettes that Jacques created himself in the late 2000s, because those were the originals. Those were the first ones released. So I have them. I have a reference point. I know how they smell. Um, and now smelling what Olivier has brought out is just 
so not good compared to the originals that it's 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 a shame it's just it's an utter shame because i mean technology advances you know you could make even better stuff today than you could yesterday and yet you know you opt out of that and you make something worse and that's what is unacceptable to me with gardenia i understand an evolution throughout decades and it's out of my reach i've never smelled the original 20s formulation of gardenia so I'm lost there, you know what I mean? I, I don't have the, the right anchor reference point, but I do have it uh, for Coromandel because I have the first edition. I do have it for Bois, I'm not Boisil. Ciao, that's from the 20s again. I do have it for 28 La Pausa. You know, I do have it for number 18. I do have it for 31 Rue Cambon. I do have it for Jersey, even though Jersey is one of the is the last one that came out before Olivier took took over. Uh, I I do have it for um, even for Sycamore, even though we know that Sycamore existed in the '40s, but it was a different perfume that happened to have the same name. So you know, um, I do have the first uh, Bel, Respi Bel Respiro, and comparatively, I can I can really tell you that the eau de toilettes that Jacques envisioned for the first time, they were amazing. And it's literally, it's embarrassing, it's a shame to take them out of the Chanel heritage, out of this Chanel history, because it was the first edition. And, and, and it was, we're not 30 years, 40 years away from the first edition. You still have the technology to make them. The only reason you're discontinuing them is because you want to charge more and you don't want to give people an option to buy a cheaper eau de toilette than and eau de parfum. And by only putting on the market an eau de parfum, you want people to buy that. Because Chanel knew if they put out the eau de toilette and the eau de parfum, people would be buying the eau de toilettes and the eau de parfums would have failed. That's the only reason. It's super, it's like so transparent that they discontinued the eau de toilettes to not give us a choice. Because had we had a choice, the eau de parfums would have flopped, obviously. Debbie says, Time machine we need. Oh, that's what like the Yoda voice. Time machine we need or need we. Uh, Emilio says Bel Respiro de Parfum doesn't last at all. Yeah, it's a joke. Emilio, the first edition of Bel Respiro, which I still have, lasts over a day. And on the clothes, even the next day, it is so powerful. It's intoxicating. It, it's at times it's too much even like that that's what we're talking about that, those were the first editions the first coromandel eau de toilette first of all the white chocolate you smell it you don't smell it and then you want the synthetic stuff that patchouli are we you want to talk patchouli and in coromandel and that baroque renaissance heft and weight and depth of the fragrance oh my gosh it overpowering Back then, the first bottle I bought was a 75. Uh, no. no, that's not true. Uh, the first bottle I bought was a 200 ml because they only existed in 200 mls. But I bought it um, off a secondhand um, website for $50, by the way. And then after that, for traveling purposes, I got a 75 ml. I have not finished either one of the two bottles because they are just like a pure perfume that's how intense they are like one little you know me i overdo it like this one i can even spray 30 times i'm not joking all over the body and it's okay <laughs> with the first edition of coromandel it's like three tops sprays and you're done you're done you can't breathe anymore it's a little bit like udi spahan by dior you know like that sort of <gasps> you can't breathe mm. Forever Fragrant Kid says, yes, with original Coromandel. Samantha Ferrari says, I have a first edition Coromandel. It is exquisite. Emilio says, I've never tried the original 2007 formulations. Well, one day, Emilio, one day. You never know. It can happen sooner than later. When you least expect it. Kedora says, okay, guys, I'm going to go to sleep because it's past 11 p.m. here, so goodbye. Love y'all. Love you too, Kedora. Have a great night. Emma says, is Bel Respiro Eau de Toilette worth it? Yes, if you can get the first editions from 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, up to 2011. Danique van Harem says, I'm thinking about buying Cartier La Panthère. 
very interesting gardenia scent. I don't have it, so I can't really say much about it. But let's see how this thing is smelling now. Very plasticky. <laughs> gardenia mixing up with uh, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. What is it with that darn fish? It, it's coming out again, even through the gardenia. I still smell that salmony, metally touch. Hmm. Stuttmann says, a better policy for Chanel would have been to let Olivier make his crappy eau de parfums. There will be a market among snobby women and left the eau de toilette untouched for people who actually want to smell nice. Yeah, Stuttmann, in an ideal world, ideal, that's not ideal at all, but in, I get it, what you're saying. No, they really think in terms of quick revenue. And it's not about giving options. Options don't let... There's not, there's no quick buck to be made when there's too many options. But anyway, guys, that will be it. That, it's that that will be it. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching. I'm going to like, I don't know what happened with the thumbs up, so I'm gonna free that option right after. So come back to the video and thumb it up afterwards, please. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel here on YouTube's if you haven't already. Um, boy, this was a roller coaster ride. We, we, we went through everything. We've showed so many pieces and things, and we've discussed a lot of different topics. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. Um, um, Elke says, what do you think uh, of the older Joy or 1000 Eau de Parfum by Jean Patou? Have they changed those two? Oh, girl, I don't know. Uh, I, I do not know. I do not know that answer to that question. Anyway, love you all, everybody. Uh, thank you, Emma. Thank you, Sasha. Love you too. T, love you too. Zarnold Yen says thank you. Thank you. Amelia says, La Pate has some skank to it, but it's interesting. <laughs> Melinda says, good night, all. Stapma says, already thumbed it up, baby. XOXO. Thank you guys so much. And... Um, they're gonna try to trick us over and over and over again. That's what they did. That's what they does. That's what they did. Dud done. And they're gonna keep doing it. Don't matter though. We always find a way to smile because we never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Somewhere over the rainbow in the fashion bunker. Bye bye.